It is commonly claimed and taught that evolution is both a fact and a theory. But can this claim really be defended scientifically? I want to welcome you to Creation Radio and TV. I'm your host, Mike Riddle, and today's session is titled, Is Evolution Both a Fact and a Theory? Well, we'll start by looking at some of the claims by the evolutionists. And let's start with the gentleman by name of Ernst Mayer, who has a PhD and is an evolutionary biologist, and he states, no educated person any longer questions the validity of the so-called theory of evolution, which we now know to be a simple fact. Here's another evolutionist, John Joe McFadden, who has his PhD in biochemistry, and he states, Evolution is no longer just a theory. It is as much a fact as gravity or erosion. Scientists have measured evolutionary changes in scores of organisms. Now, let's turn to the U.S. National Academy of Sciences and see what they have to say. Is evolution a theory or a fact? It is both. But that answer requires looking more deeply at the meanings of the words theory and fact. Well, let's just do that. Let's look at some of the definitions of both a scientific fact and a scientific theory. So, what is the definition of a scientific fact? Well, let's start with the National Academy of Sciences, and they state, In science, an observation that has been repeatedly confirmed and for all practical purposes is accepted as true. Truth in science, however, is never final, and what is accepted as a fact today may be modified or even discarded tomorrow. Let's look at the definition given by the online dictionary, and it states, any observation that has been repeatedly confirmed and accepted as true. Any scientific observation that has been refuted, that has not been refuted. Note the words observation and repeatedly confirmed. In other words, in science, a fact typically refers to an observation, a measurement, or another form of evidence that can be expected to occur the same way under similar circumstances. In other words, the term scientific fact also refers to a scientific explanation that has been tested and confirmed so many times that there's no longer any compelling reason to keep testing or looking for alternative answers. So that's a scientific fact. Now, what is a scientific theory? Now, there are many different definitions of a theory. Some are very simple, such as it's just an educated guess. But a scientific theory is more rigorous than that. It is not just a scientific guess. Let's take a look at the definition from our National Center for Science Education and our National Academy of Sciences. And they state, in science, a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world that can incorporate facts, laws, inferences, and tested hypotheses. That is a definition of a scientific theory. Now let's look at the Hutchinson Dictionary of Science, 1999, for their definition of a scientific theory. In science, a set of ideas, concepts, principles, or methods used to explain a wide set of observed facts. Now let's take a look at one of our modern biology textbooks, and it states, Time-tested concept that makes useful and dependable predictions about the natural world. So to summarize these definitions, let's look at the basic attributes of a scientific fact. Number one, it must be observable. Secondly, it must be repeatable. And third, it has never been refuted. It is time-tested and never refuted. Now, what are the attributes of a scientific theory? Well, it must be a well-substantiated explanation means it must be supported by the evidence or some proof. That's what we mean by well substantiated. It is used to explain observed facts and it must be able to make accurate predictions. Those are the basic tenets or attributes of a scientific theory. Now can a scientific theory be overthrown? Yes it can. A statement or theory is called falsified or invalid when an observation or argument goes against this known 
theory or demonstrates the theory to be false. So if a theory can be falsified if there's something out there that can show that it is not true all the time. Now, let's look at evolution. Does evolution really measure up against these definitions? Definition of a scientific fact and a definition of a scientific theory. In other words, is evolution, as the evolutionists teach, both a fact and a theory? And let's start with the Big Bang. Is that a scientific fact and a scientific theory? Well, first of all, it's never been observed, so it cannot be a scientific fact. Also, it's not repeatable. No one's ever repeated it. And there are many scientific evidences that go against the Big Bang, which would falsify it as even a theory. Such as, let's look at some of the very basic things. Where did the matter come from to create the Big Bang? And what caused it to explode? See, the universe could not have created itself. That goes against all logic and science. And the universe had to have a beginning because if it had no beginning, then we've overthrown the second law of thermodynamics, which says everything's wearing down. And if the universe had no beginning, everything in this universe would have worn down by now. And there'd be no stars or any virtual movement in this universe. Also, the existence of spiral galaxies goes against the Big Bang. Because after a few rotations, galaxies lose their spiral shape, but yet many galaxies are still spiral in shape. The background radiation, which is often used as support of the Big Bang, is now good evidence against the Big Bang, and it always has been good evidence against the Big Bang. Yes, the Big Bang did predict some background radiation, but it was a way off. You see, the background radiation that was discovered was quite a bit different than what the Big Bang predicted. So what did the scientists do? They changed the Big Bang to match the evidence. That's not real good science. Also, the fact that we have not enough supernova remnants. There have not been enough observed exploded stars to account for billions and billions of years. And also, the homogeneous temperature of the universe. There has not been enough time in the alleged Big Bang 13 billion years to have a homogeneous temperature. So these evidences and many other scientific evidence show that it really isn't a scientific theory. It can only best be a model or a hypothesis, but not a fact and not a theory. Now, let's look at star formation. Is that a scientific fact and a scientific theory? Well, first of all, no one has ever observed a star to form. And based on the principles of physics, stars will not form through naturalistic processes. Since we get these great big gas and dust clouds that rotate around out there, they do begin to gravitation and collapse inward but not enough to form a star because as they inwardly collapse, they generate heat pressure, which is stronger than the gravity and always causes that cloud to expand outward. So is star formation a fact in a theory? Absolutely not. It is neither. How about the origin of life? It is, is it both a scientific fact and a scientific theory? Well, let's start here. No one ever observed the origin of life. No one ever observed life originating by naturalistic processes, so it cannot be a fact. Also, it's never been repeated in a laboratory. And the scientific evidence clearly shows that life cannot evolve through naturalistic processes. See, the scientific evidence shows it simply cannot happen. In other words, life cannot start in the presence of oxygen because oxygen destroys chemical bonds. Life could not start if there was no oxygen out there because we have no oxygen, we have no ozone, and the ultraviolet rays of that sun will fry everything. And also life cannot start in water because there's a process called hydrolysis which destroys the chemical bonds. So life can't start on the land and it cannot start in the water. And also life requires 100% left-handed amino acids in all proteins. Why? Why is that important? Because through naturalistic processes, amino acids will always bond left and right-handed. That means the naturalistic processes always tend to be away from life, but not towards it. So our conclusion on life is it cannot be a scientific fact and it cannot be a scientific theory because it has been shown to be falsified. We can't even, our best scientists in the world cannot even create one single biological protein, let alone the other components of a living cell. 
Well, how about DNA and information now? Is it both a scientific fact and a scientific theory? Well, first one, first of all, no one ever solved this vast amount of information evolving in our DNA molecules. Secondly, there's no mechanism that can create or add new genetic information. People will say, well, mutations will do that. No, they will not. No one has ever observed a mutation, a random mutation, to create new functional genetic information. It might duplicate information or it might subtract information, but it has never been shown to add new information. Adding billions of years to this story does not help because no one's ever observed billions of years. Therefore, the information in our DNA, how it got there, is not a scientific fact nor it is a scientific theory. The scientific evidence falsifies the whole claim by the evolutionist. Well then, what about the fossil record? Does it support evolution? Is it both a scientific fact and a scientific theory? Well, no one ever saw these vast amount of fossils forming, so it can't be a fact. See, the whole idea of the fossil record by evolutionists is interpreted through speculation, misinformation, made up drawings in textbooks, but not observational science. To date, after all these years, there are only a very few alleged transitional fossils, and none of these really hold up under scientific scrutiny. And there are many evidences against this whole idea of millions and billions of years the fossils forming. For example, the Cambrian explosion. Down at the bottom layers of the fossil record, the Precambrian and Cambrian layers, we find fossils of single cells, and we find fossils of very complex creatures like trilobites, jellyfish, fish, and seashells. But nowhere do we find any transitions leading up to these. That, folks, right there falsifies the whole evolutionary model of the fossil record being a fact or a theory supporting evolutionism. Also, we find fossil graveyards all over the world, where we find hundreds, sometimes thousands of creatures all buried and fossilized together. Now, this does not happen by long, slow processes. This takes catastrophic events, which again shows the fossil record is neither a fact nor it is a scientific theory. Now, what about the dating methods? What about radioactive dating methods? Are they fact? Are they scientific theory? Do they determine exact ages of things? Well, first of all, we need to understand that the age is not what is actually measured through these methods. What we do measure are ratio between elements, and then we come to a conclusion made on assumptions. Yes, all these radiometric dating methods have assumptions in them, which means they cannot be fact. And it has been shown repeatedly that these assumptions are false. So therefore, they cannot be fact, nor can they be theory. In addition, there are many scientific evidences that support an Earth of only a few thousand years to just a few million years old, which refutes the whole idea of billions of years. So are the radiometric dating methods a scientific fact and a scientific theory? Absolutely not. Well, let's go to maybe one more. How about dinosaurs? Are dinosaurs both a scientific fact and a scientific theory supporting evolutionism? Well, as far as we know, there are no dinosaurs living today. And here's the killer to the evolution model. There are no real transitions leading up to the dinosaurs. Yes, in some of our museums and some of our textbooks, they'll show a reptile as the precursor to the dinosaurs. But folks, that's a reptile. The fact is, there are no real transitions leading up to the dinosaurs. It's as if they were created after their kind. What a thought! Exactly matching the Bible, showing in conclusion the dinosaurs are not a scientific fact, nor are they a scientific theory supporting evolutionism. So let's come down to our final analysis. Based on the observable evidence, not rhetoric, not intimidation, not drawings, but based on the scientific evidence, evolution cannot be legitimately claimed to be a scientific fact or a scientific theory. 
So what is evolution then? It is a model, or maybe an unverified hypothesis, or maybe just faith. See, the Bible refers to this type of information. In 1 Timothy 6.20, chapter 6, verse 20, we read, O Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. That is a good description of evolutionism. Also, we see in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, where it reads, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived by false information and stories that cannot save you. Many church leaders, Christian university professors, and youth leaders have been deceived by this false knowledge. They've bought into the world's teachings rather than trust the truth of God's Word. I urge you to be on the watch, on the lookout in your churches and your schools for this type of false knowledge being presented as truth. And finally, Colossians 2.8. Beware, lest any man cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. If this topic or any of our other short videos have been helpful, you might consider supporting Creation Training Initiative with your finances and your prayers so that we can continue to get the truth of God's Word and the saving knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ to as many as we can. Thank you and God bless you. If these lessons had been a blessing to you, you might consider financially supporting the ministry of Creation Training Initiative. You can do this by going to our website, creationtraining.org. Again, that's creationtraining.org. Your tax-deductible donation of just $20, $50 or more a month, or a one-time gift of any amount will make you an education partner in building an army of Christian educators who can teach the biblical account of creation and train others to be able to defend their faith and be biblically faithful to God's Word as it states in 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear.